Mr. DeSanctis, uh, you were the director here at Tomo, right? No, no, you were. I am, yes. And uh, for the how long in that capacity? Um, since February of 2012. And so uh, the buck stops with you, right? Yes. You got these reports, didn't you? You knew what was being said about the Toma VA. You knew what the employees inside were saying. They told you, right? Uh, the retaliatory um, uh, accusations uh, did not come to me. So you were clueless on this. You were the director and you had no idea what was going on inside the Toma VA by, by the hundreds of employees. Uh, no, that's not correct. Actions that were brought to my attention, I took action to ensure that they were resolved. Does it sound like you took action? Because I think Jason's parents would say you didn't take action. Or Mr. Bear's family would say you didn't take action. Ms. Clancy, um, you and I, I'm, I want to touch on this briefly. You and I spoke uh, last week, and I, I agree, you can't diagnose Mr. Bear over the phone. You made a good point. But the fact that he sat in the Toma VA for an hour and a half showing signs of a stroke where doctors are on staff and nothing happened, and they sent him on a, 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 an hour drive to La Crosse? I mean, this is outrageous stuff. I mean, you, the original point you made is fine, but what are we doing to change the culture inside the VA, inside the VA system where if, if we got a veteran who's 74 years old who's showing signs of a stroke, we actually act. It's like out of a movie that, that you have slow moving bureaucrats lumping around when a guy's dying. I mean, I, the, the Bear family should be absolutely outraged, and they obviously are. What are we doing to change the culture inside? The Toma VA. Um, I think that this was less a culture change issue. First of all, the care was completely, totally unacceptable. I think that needs to be said. And uh, the only thing, we cannot bring him back. I wish we could. Um, but I am moved and inspired by his daughters being here today and speaking out against but this. But and I, I hope she doesn't stop. But Dr. Clancy, I think what moved no, her no, no, more but I, is if her, if her father didn't die in vain. No. And that she knows that changes are going to be made inside, exactly. that there's not another slow-moving bureaucrat when someone else is in serious critical um, uh, medical scenarios where they actually move and help them. We have staffing shortages in that uh, urgent care unit, and we are working to rectify those. And we have also worked with nursing staff to identify some very clear deficiencies that were revealed as a result of I, that I care. I appreciate that. Did you read the IG report? This one? Yes. The, yes. yes. Uh, would have you substantiated the claims? I know you, I'm, I'm flipping the role here on you. Usually the IG is looking at what the VA is doing. But uh, in your role, Dr. Clancy, in the VA, if, if you had seen that report, would have you substantiated the claims? Would have you made that report public? I don't think the results found in that report and reported were definitive. I think this is a problem with our process. Uh, Dr. Houlihan's practices have been reviewed uh, by many external parties um, and what actually prompted me to uh, remove him from uh, seeing patient care and make sure that he couldn't prescribe further, uh, that his pr privileges were revoked along with the nurse practitioner in January was a review commissioned by the network. Okay, and uh, just by the way, is, is Dr. Houlihan still employed at the VA? He is, yes. Is, do is uh, Mr. DeSancta still employed? Yes. Miss uh, Miss Davis, who uh, prescribed the lethal cocktail that killed Jason, is she still employed? She is on administrative detail. Is she and is under she investigation. from the American taxpayer? Yes. She is. Yes. And I think that's what makes people angry here. People aren't people aren't held accountable. They're not fired. No, I, I want to. I want to. I want. If Mr. I could just say one thing, yeah, uh, Congressman, the only thing that would be worse is if we had doubts about a practitioner, rushed through it, and uh, a good attorney made sure that they had to keep a job, and you know what I'm saying, that, we, that the taxpayers had to pay them for long periods of time. I, I, I'm going to to Mr. Day, and I thank you for that. I, I don't know if we need for evidence. Um, we need emails, voicemails, text messages for our burden of proof. As a prosecutor, you could bring in, I was a former prosecutor, you can bring in witnesses that give compelling testimony, um, and juries can listen to that, and they can convict. And it sounds like you had pretty compelling um, evidence that was presented. Um, even uh, Dr. Clancy found that uh, it was a 2.5% uh, higher rates of uh, uh, prescription drugs of 400 milligrams. Got that stat a little bit wrong. And that you have people who are notoriously frightened throughout the Toma VA, 
and we kind of throw our hands up in the air and go, well, I guess there's uh, nothing going on here. What I, I, what I found, what, what my staff came back and said, listen, you didn't want to put, make that report public because you were more concerned about the employees of the Toma VA than caring for the veterans in the VA system. That's what concerned them. And you actually told them that. And, and in regard to um, what you're doing now, making all the complaints public, I applaud you for that. But I got to tell you, the, the, the perception that we have of uh, the IG is it's arrogant. You're annoyed that you're here. You're annoyed that you have these veterans looking to you to protect them from the VA system and that you're being held to account publicly. That's frustrating them. They're frustrating you. I hope that you, <laughs> Mr. Day, I hope, I hope you take this back and you listen to the families that testified here and know that you may be the last line of defense for them as they tell their story to you privately, that you go and you work your hearts out for the men and women that raised their hand and served their country and fought for the freedom and the liberty that we enjoy. You owe that to them. And I hope that you leave this hearing and have a new, refreshed attitude and devotion and conviction to protect them for inadequate care in the VA system. I yield back.